Or if you turn to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. And we're going to start in verse 30. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of Jehovah in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of Jehovah came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and dared not behold. Then said Jehovah to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and have heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. Then Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Jehovah Yeshua, I just thank you for today. I thank you for what you've done and how you've come and not left your your children, your flock, comfortless, how you've not forsaken your covenant, and how you've again and again delivered your people every time they've become, gotten in bondage, that you, you've you sent your salvation, Yeshua. And finally, you came yourself, Yah's salvation, Yeshua, to redeem them and, and make us within your new covenant forever, wherein we stand. And I pray, Yeshua, I thank you for your blood. I thank you, Yeshua, for... All that you've done and will do, and I pray you bless this message. May it bring forth much fruit, and I pray you bless it, Yeshua, and fill us with your Holy Spirit in that precious name. So be it. So here in the book of Acts, you're going to find how the Holy Spirit appeared or was sent to Moses. It says there in verse 30, And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of Jehovah in a flame of fire in a bush. Where do you find a flame of fire in Jehovah appearing? You find it in Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Okay? There comes a sound. The sound came. The sound appeared. The sound was heard. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Notice it fills all the house. Remember, it's a house and it's filled. There's more to these verses than you think. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of what? Fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice, they were all filled. They were indwelt with the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we read about last Sabbath in Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Let's go back there again real quick. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And I preached on that last Sabbath. 
The Holy Spirit is given forever as a seal to the children of God, to the children of Jehovah. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. It's the power that Yeshua says, wait for the power from on high. He says in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them, Yeshua says, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father, the power from on high, the dunamis, the, the, not the, the dynamite, to lead us and teach us and allow us to keep the Torah, to be indwelt with this Holy Spirit, to lead us unto perfection. Here in Acts chapter 731, we read how the voice of Jehovah came. And that word came means genoma. Genoma. It appeared. Genesis. It appeared unto Moses. The Holy Spirit came to Moses and appeared as a burning bush. Then the Holy Spirit left. The Holy Spirit appears at Mount Sinai. The whole mountain was altogether on fire. It was altogether on a smoke. Jehovah appeared. The Holy Spirit appeared and came down. The Holy Spirit came and left, but in the New Testament, the covenant, the Holy Spirit indwells us forever. Turn back to Ezekiel chapter 37. Again in the book of Ezekiel. Just like Isaiah, just like Jeremiah. The gospel is preached aforetime. In Ezekiel chapter 37, there's a vision of a valley of dry bones. And in verse 11, Jehovah said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Adonai Jehovah, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Jehovah when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, am, that I Jehovah, have spoken it and have performed it. Then he goes on to say, And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be unto them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more any, at all. And then we're going to keep reading down to verse 23. Let's keep reading. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, neither their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, or Yeshua, my beloved servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David, or my beloved servant, shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Okay? Jehovah makes a covenant of peace with them, and I will place them and multiply them, 
And I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Notice that verse. And I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Jehovah, do sanctify Israel. When my sanctuary, he says it again, shall be in the midst or in the middle of them. For how long? Forevermore. Here Jehovah promises in verse 11 that He shall put His Spirit in you. There's the promise. And then He says He's going to make a covenant. In verse 26 He says, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace or comfort. We just sang about that song, The Comforter. Alright? This is the fulfillment of that. I will make a covenant of peace with them, and I will place them in... And I will place them in the land... And I will place them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. That word, I will place, means Nathan, or Nathan. I will send them. Okay? Notice it's send. Nathan. I will send them and multiply them, and I will set, or again the same word, Nathan, I will send my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. So if you look at that verses, these verses more closely, what is being sent? Nathan, what is being placed? What is being placed is the Spirit of God and the sanctuary of God which is in the midst of us forevermore. Then he says, My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Jehovah, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary or my temple shall be in the midst of them forevermore. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came and left until... The fulfillment of the promise of the Father, which Yeshua says, Ye, ye have heard of in me. The promise was fulfilled in the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was sent, Nathan, Nathan, from heaven. It was sent from heaven, the promise of the Father. And what is the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you? In the new covenant of peace, the Holy Spirit is sent, not done, and placed within us. Jehovah's sanctuary is made without hands. Jehovah's sanctuary is in our hearts. Your heart has chambers. You read in Ezekiel chapter 40 about the temple. It has chambers. Okay? It's a vision of a heavenly temple. Your heart has chambers. The Holy Spirit's dwelling in your hearts. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit abides with us for how long? Here in Ezekiel 37, 28, When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them, or in the middle of them, literally, Christ in you, the hope of glory, he shall be 
in the midst of them forevermore. Turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Listen to what Yeshua is saying in the whole chapter. Yeshua said, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of Me. The promise of the New Covenant is the fulfillment and is the final covenant, the covenant in His blood. This is the, the gospel of all ages, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, bringing many sons to glory, many sons to perfection. Hebrews chapter 12. You've not come to Mount Sinai which burned and quaked unto blackness nor tempest and darkness, which Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But you've come out to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to innumerable company of angels, and to the souls of just men made perfect, and to Yeshua, the mediator of the new covenant. This gospel is all, like I said, taking you back to the Garden of Eden. Back to perfection. Back to where Adam and Eve were 100% filled with the Holy Spirit. 100% abiding in the Father's house. Listen to what Yeshua says. Every single verse. If you read Ezekiel and all the prophets, you're going to find the fulfillment of what Yeshua came both. He began both to do and to teach. And what he's teaching you is that he is the fulfillment of all scripture. In, in John chapter 14, verse 1, Yeshua said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, okay? Rooms, mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. In Ezekiel, what does it say? It says in verse 26, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them that word is place. In English, in Hebrew, it's Nathan. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Go back to John chapter 14, verse 2. Yeshua says, I go to prepare a what? A place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Yeshua saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Yeshua saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth, what? That dwelleth in me. 
He doeth the works. This is exactly what Yeshua is teaching. The fulfillment of the new covenant. Then He promises it for, for us. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father and the Son are one. Yeshua is Jehovah. Verse 14, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And here's verse 15. And look at verse 16. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. What is going to abide? Who is going to abide? The comforter. Back in Ezekiel 37... Verse 14, Jehovah says about the dry bones, the dead flesh, the flesh which profited nothing, Jehovah will revive it. They'll be born again. Verse 14, And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, Jehovah, have spoken it and performed it. The words Yeshua says, they are spirit and they are life. He fulfilled all His word. He says in verse 16 of John chapter 14, And I will pray the Father, and He will, shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. In the end of Ezekiel 37 verse 28, he says, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore, the Holy Spirit shall abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not. You cannot see the Father. Neither knoweth Him, but ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. The Holy Spirit dwelling in you, is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37, verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. The middle of you. Yeshua says here in John chapter 14, the end of verse 17, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless or without peace. This is the covenant of peace. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that, if, that I am in my Father and ye in me and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, the Torah... He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Janome appeared. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him, our house, our temple, our sanctuary with them. Verse 24, He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the words... And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, 
which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. How did the chapter begin? John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. What is the whole chapter about? The Holy Spirit abiding with you and in you forever. Alright? And what else? Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Keep your hand there. Go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, verse 14. Or verse 13. And ye shall know that I am Jehovah when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. The question was asked, by Judas, who is not the other Judas, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world or to the heathen? How? Because the Holy Spirit, as Yeshua said, is not seen. Yeshua said in verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. How do you know you're of his flock, of his children? By the Spirit of God. The Apostle Paul said, if you have not the Spirit of God, you are none of his. The scripture says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the living God and the Holy Spirit dwelt in you? The Spirit of God, and I shall put my Spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Yeshua is going to prepare a place for us. In the meantime, He's left us another, a comforter, the Holy Spirit, to abide with us and be in us forever until we're all in one house. Then He says in Ezekiel 26, or Ezekiel 37, verse 26, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. What is the covenant of peace? The covenant of peace, Yeshua spoke it here in John chapter 14, verse 26, or verse 27. He says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. What is Yeshua doing? He's giving you the covenant of peace, of shalom. You have comfort, you're not of the world. The world doesn't have peace. The world drinks itself for comfort. The world takes drugs for comfort. The world seeks leisurely things for comfort. The world has no peace. Jehovah says, there is no peace unto the wicked, saith Jehovah. Before I got saved, I didn't have peace. My conscience bothered me. I had the weight of sin upon my shoulders. It was a heavy weight. But the day I got saved, I felt, I literally felt, my sin, guilt, lifted off my shoulders. I got peace about it. I got satisfaction knowing He has pardoned my sins. There is no peace without Yeshua, without having your sins forgiven. There is no forgiveness of sins but through His blood. You're not going to get peace working and doing good. You're not going to get peace keeping Torah. You keep Torah because you love Him, because you don't want to sin. Because the Holy Spirit in you is 
You are holy. You have no desire to sin. If you have a desire to sin and all you want to do is sin, you're lost, my friend. You have a dead, unregenerate heart. As Yeshua says, you appear righteous unto men, but within are full of dead man's bones and excess. You are of your father, the devil. He was, he was a liar from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. You're a dead, walking zombie without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives life. The Holy Spirit gives you the ability to walk and keep Torah. The covenant of peace. Yeshua says, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you, it's a gift, another comforter that He may abide with you forever. John 14, 16 is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 and other scriptures. The covenant of peace is the covenant of the comforter. It's the covenant of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit, the Chodesh Ruach. The comforter is the Holy Spirit, is the gift of Acts 19.1. Have they received the Holy Ghost since the day you got saved? Yeshua even tells us He will abide, dwell with us forever. This is the sanctuary of Jehovah. In John 14, 2, Yeshua says, I go to prepare a place for you. This place is holy ground. This place is sanctified ground. This place is eternal, made in the heavens without hands. It is not seen, but it is built without hands. It is spiritual. So it is with salvation. It is all spiritual. The flesh profiteth nothing. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ. One day our bodies will be changed to immortal. Our souls will unite with Jehovah in heaven, in Mount Zion. This is the place He goes to prepare for us. There will be no tabernacle there. You have to wonder if there is no tabernacle there, how does Jehovah's sanctuary abide with us forever? Where he says in Ezekiel 37 verse 28, And the heathen shall know that I, Jehovah, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. When you read Revelation, where is the temple? There is no temple in heaven. Jehovah is dwelling with us and in us. Yeshua said in John 14, 4 and 14, 11, that He is in the Father and the Father is in Him. If you've seen Yeshua, you've seen the Father. For us, the Holy Spirit abides with us. We are His temple. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter three. And we're going to look at let's just read verse starting for verse one. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you are not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye, are, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as Jehovah gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, and ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's what? Ye are God's building. 
you're God's building according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder built on the foundation. He says, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yeshua Mashiach. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. This is the new covenant. This is how you build upon the foundation. We've covered way back, and that's what we did last week in Hebrews, end of Hebrews 5 and Hebrews 6, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God let us go on to perfection. And now we're looking at the new covenant, the covenant of peace, the covenant in the blood of Yeshua. In the new covenant, the Holy Spirit abides with you forever. The Torah is written in your hearts. This is where we're going and this is where we're going to remain. All right. We're going to go on and look more and more at the New Testament. We're going to build upon the foundation of the law, the Torah, and the prophets. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. This is what the scriptures teach. This is what no doubt the Apollos and the Apostle Paul knew. And that they know what the new covenant is. Verse 17 he warns. He says if any man defile the temple of God. Him shall God destroy. You know what they did with the utensils or anything in the temple that got became defiled. They burned them. That's why he's giving warning here in verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned. He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. When they went to rebuild the temple, they even uprooted the dirt. They took it and they cleansed the land also before they rebuilt the temple. Here he says in verse 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again Jehovah knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ. You're, of Christ, you're Christ's, and Christ is God's. So again, it's clear that the promise of the Father, that the promise of the Father in the New Covenant Shut that door. That the promise of the Father and the new covenant promises the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and that the Comforter is the given unto us is the covenant of peace. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six. So 
So it says there in 1 Corinthians, for the temple of God is holy. Now, now here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says in verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith Jehovah, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith Jehovah Shaddai, or El Shaddai. Again, the scripture says, and he's quoting scripture, For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You don't defile yourself. Just like the priests, before they entered the temple, they were sanctified. They had to wash themselves. Seven days they had to sanctify themselves and put on the holy garments. This is how you're supposed to walk. The whole Torah is a picture of how you're supposed to walk. It's showing you physically those things that you do spiritually. You put on Christ. You sanctify. You keep every jot and tittle of the Torah. You fulfill all His Word. You do His works. You walk in the Spirit. You offer the thanksgiving, uh, the sacrifice of thanksgiving, which is the fruit of your lips. You offer praise unto Jehovah. You worship in spirit and in truth. You keep your house clean. You keep your house sanctified. You you do, you go about the Father's business. You have fellowship with the Father. The glory of God appears and dwells in the inner holy of holies. The glory of God was seen in the temple. As Jehovah has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Go back to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 21. Yeshua says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest, reveal, show, come, appear, Myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not a scar yet, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 15. Actually, stay in verse 14. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse... Chapter 16. Actually, chapter 15, verse 18. Yeshua says, If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If... Ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. 
If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their Torah, in their law, that they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye shall bear witness, because ye, are, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And now, look at chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send them unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall speak, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever yet he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the, will, the Spirit of Truth, He will guide you into all truth. Ezekiel 35, 34, turn to Ezekiel 34, I think we've read this earlier, but in Ezekiel 34, verse 25, again the promise is made, and I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Those evil beasts are those of the world that attack you. It's an allegory. And Yeshua says in verse 31, And ye my flock, the flock of my pasture are men, and I am your God, saith Adonai Yehovah, or Yeshua Yehovah. We are his flock. The flock is Israel. We are the other sheep that Yeshua says, the other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them I must also bring. Yeshua says in verse 31, I will save my flock. In verse 22 he says, Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I'll judge between cattle and cattle. We have two more verses. John, Gospel of John, chapter 17. And verse 9, Yeshua says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I am come, and I come to thee, O Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Whilst I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 18. We'll look at verse 1. Verse that Yeshua says, I'll just read it. Of them that thou gavest me, I have lost none. In Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 22, that we just read, 
Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. Yeshua prays for us because we're still in the world, but He doesn't leave us comfortless. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, let's pray.